stay right where you are because Cybernet's here with me, Lucy Longhurst. Buckle up for two games that'll drive you wild. Check out the latest in accessories and meet one of the biggest stars of the cinema. It's a monster. It's Cybernet. Fans of a good old-fashioned car chase are going to love Driver, a new offering from the makers of Destruction Derby. Still very much in its development stages, the game was one of the more subtle surprises of the E3 conference in Atlanta, but the developers hope its originality will set it apart from other road-based games. The concept for Driver really is to accurately simulate film car chases, or really after that effect, sort of big American floaty cars with a suspension, big tail-out slides, just causing havoc on the streets, just to really give the impression of a film, but you actually create the film and you actually position the cameras like a film director exactly where you want them. Long shot, wide angle or close up, it's all up to you. If you look around uh, E3, there are just so many racing games and to tell them apart, it's very difficult. With Destruction Derby, it was original at the time, actually making a, a whole play of the, of the, of the collisions and the, and the damage. And in this, we really just wanted to do something that was completely different. So it's not a race at all, it's just purely a chasing game. The game lets you drive around various American cities in any direction and at any speed while completing an array of different missions, from trailing gangsters to driving a getaway car. With such stunning graphics and imaginative ideas, Driver looks as if it could run all the red lights straight onto your PC. With new driving games being released almost every week, someone has at last focused on the equally exciting two-wheeled racing genre. From the programmers of the Screamer series, Superbike World Championship is based on one of the most exhilarating and rapidly growing sports in the world. So far, the game looks absolutely stunning and will push 3D effects cards to the limit. A realistic crash feature, not to mention lifelike bike handling and animation, will no doubt be a strong selling point. With an official license, the game will allow you to take control of your favourite superbike riders, such as Carl Fogarty and Frankie Keeley. You'll also be able to race around some amazingly detailed, authentic tracks from the series. Superbikes looks as though it may redefine racing games on the PC, and we can't wait. The PC games market is huge and new titles seem to appear every day. But with so many games to choose from, deciding which one to spend your hard-earned money on can be quite difficult. Fortunately, the web has a host of sites where you can download demos for free. These demos usually contain one or two levels that feature in the real game, giving you the perfect opportunity to try before you buy. These demos are mainly available from two types of site. Firstly, there are the official gaming sites created by the makers of the game. Nearly every company has its own and each is updated regularly. Of course, the choice of games is limited to those made by that company. But if you're after a specific game, these are the sites to check out first. Unofficial sites like this one may not be as up-to-date or as fast as the official ones, but the choice of games is far wider. From strategy titles like StarCraft to the latest Quake clones like Unreal, these sites have them all. And as they're usually independent, you can be sure their reviews aren't biased. Although certain demos can take quite a long time to download, sometimes up to four or five hours, it's far cheaper than buying an expensive game that turns out to be poorly made. Many sites also include demos of games that are not yet released, giving you the chance to try out all the latest titles before they've even reached the shops. And unlike magazine cover discs, some sites allow you to play their demos against other people via the internet. So if you want to test out those great looking games before you buy, the internet is definitely the most versatile, up-to-date place to be. Forget all those mindless computer games, it's 
time for a bit of culture from one of the greatest writers of our time, William Shakespeare. And where better to start than with two of his best-known plays? Oh, this is hired and salary, not revenge. As well as featuring clips from classic productions of Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet, these two packages go behind the scenes to teach you all about the 16th century playwright himself. You can even visit the Globe Theatre, recently rebuilt after years of campaigning by Hollywood actor Sam Wanamaker. If you come over here, I'll show you in the Globe what, what the main difference for an actor is. There he was, in a room, in effect, surrounded by the people. After finding out about medieval London, where Shakespeare's plays were first performed, it's time for a trip to Italy and the setting for the most tragic love story ever written. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. If all that talk of the literary genius and his great dramatic work has inspired you to tread the boards and chance your luck at acting, just remember that first you have to find your perfect Romeo or Juliet. Me, I'm still looking. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? The N64 may be Nintendo's latest machine, but their handheld console, the Game Boy, is still the world's most popular games platform. Game Boy is a, a true phenomenon. It's going into its 10th year, and in the US we'll probably double sales this year over last year. And I think it's just very popular because it's very portable, it's very affordable, and it appeals to all ages. But now it's taking on a whole new dimension with the addition of a digital camera. This fits into the standard game slot and allows you to make your friends look very silly. The cartridge allows you to store over 30 funked up photos and even use them in different games such as juggling or making music as a DJ. Using trick lenses and special effects, the camera lets you be very creative with still images and animations. Once you're happy with your artwork, you can print it out on the Game Boy printer that produces little stickers. When all your friends have a camera, you can even trade pictures with one another. But don't chuck out your old models yet, because there are still loads of games coming out, and the camera is a really cool piece of kit. So it seems the handheld console is set to continue its world domination for a good while yet. In 1986, the simple but highly addictive Sentinel appeared on home computers. Sentinel Returns updates the classic in the hope that we're still interested in simplicity. Played out on three-dimensional landscapes, the Sentinel occupies its highest point while you start at its lowest. To win, you must reach a higher position than the Sentinel and absorb its energy. Moving involves creating a robot and then teleporting to it. To make sure you're higher up than where you just came from, you need to place a boulder or set of boulders on the ground before putting a robot on top. All this takes energy and so reabsorbing the robot which you just came from and any boulders that were under it is a good idea. As you play, the Sentinel may see you and drain your energy. You'll need to quickly teleport to another location and absorb more energy from surrounding trees. Survive the journey and you can zap the sentinel only to see him escape to another land. And that's about it. More sentinels appear, the landscape grows more complex and there's 650 levels to complete. The PlayStation version is frustrating but the PC version is fast. So for 3D puzzle lovers with a computer, Sentinel Returns is a fascinating update of a totally unique title. Unique is also a word used to describe the simulation that lets you build, run and potentially ruin the population of your choice. Yes, SimCity has now become SimCity 3000 and it's still managing to find new fans. SimCity is very different. It's, uh, it's not about violence, it's about uh, being constructive, being creative. It's about playing with the real world and it's very and attractive to a lot of people. As mayor of a city, in this case New York, you'll be able to see even more clearly how your decisions to change roads, office developments and budgetary limits affects its citizens. 
In reality, it seems that everyone has an opinion on what should be done to their local neighborhood. Mostly people want to reinvent their cities, cities that they know that they're attached to, and they want to create new version of those cities and personalize them. Setting yourself up in a nice mansion while others get to live in badly maintained apartments could make your taxpayers unhappy, which could mean them turning nasty. Bye! Okay, time for our competition now, so grab a pen. This week's prize is a PlayStation console together with a copy of Colin McRae Rally to play on it. Get ready to go off-road with this addictive racer that lets you get down to some good and dirty driving. Involving big names in big games is something that many thought a natural thing, but the mix hasn't always worked. For Apocalypse, Activision decided they needed a believable action hero, and that meant Bruce Willis. Welcome to Paradise, kid. We wanted to, to make Bruce Willis truly as interactive as possible, which means that we had to fully motion capture him, digitally cyber scan his face, and spend a lot of time putting it into a very, very fast, runtime 3D environment where we could have a high-poly model of Bruce playing in real time. In a plot almost as ridiculous as the movies he stars in, Bruce Willis plays Trey Kincaid, a man who finds himself battling against someone using technology to bring back evil forces long since forgotten. But digitizing an actor is only the first step in creating a memorable character, and characters need exciting environments. Working with Bruce was great because we were able to capture all of that data. Now it's really up to the technology and the gameplay to turn that data into a great game. Apocalypse, like many big titles, has had problems during development, and a game that seemed like a good idea at the time may be less so thanks to delays. Then again, controlling a Hollywood star with your joypad does have its attractions, least of which is creating as many explosions as possible with an unfeasibly large gun. Also still in production and staying in the action genre is Heretic 2, created by Raven, best known for their reworking of id titles, they're at it again. This time though, they're moving your viewpoint from first to third person. Using a successful graphics engine doesn't mean you have to be dull. We're amazed at what the Quake 2 engine can do in third person. We are truly amazed with that. We're looking at the uh, portfolio of products that are planned that use either Unreal technology or Quake technology. And there's so many coming out in, that take the first person perspective. We wanted to try something different. Though it's being compared to Tomb Raider, there isn't a lot of puzzle solving in this one. The enemies are fast and hungry, and there's more of them on screen at one time than we've come to expect. Even Heretic's imaginative weapons have taken a new direction. In previous Raven games, you've seen a lot of focus on melee weapons, which are more hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Here we have almost exclusively ranged weapons, which allow for much more interesting combat. With the news that Quake 3 has been cancelled in favour of a multiplayer update, Heretic 2 could be the best-looking quest in this now far too familiar genre. Whatever its limitations, Heretic 2 is one experience that's bound to stand out from the crowd. Two of the most frantic, foreboding titles you're ever likely to play are Death Trap Dungeon on the PlayStation and Quake 64. But battling your way through countless hordes of monsters, dragons and knights can become rather tricky, so here are a couple of cheats to help you get through. To gain access to every level in Death Trap Dungeon, simply enter the following on the main screen. L1, R1, Triangle, Triangle, Square, Circle, R1 and L1. Now when you enter the loading screen, you'll be able to play any level in the game. From the circus level, where you'll have to face some pretty mean clowns, to the final fiery encounter with those dragons, you can now try them all. But remember, accessing these levels without collecting all those weapons and spells can make the battle seem impossible. You have been warned. Fortunately, this cheat for Quake 64 will not only give you every area in the game, but also make you invulnerable and endow you with every weapon. Just access the password screen and enter the Quake symbol 16 times. A sign will appear saying invalid password, but when you enter the options menu, you'll see a debug sub-menu. Simply go to this and choose which cheats you want to play with. 
Whichever game you're playing, these codes will put you straight into the heart of the battle. But whilst Quake owners have it pretty easy, you Death Trap Dungeon players will just have to keep practicing. Good luck! Now let's take a look at the top 10 N64 games from around the world. Watch out for hair-pulling antics from those men in tights in WCW vs NWO World Tour at 10. Skidding to 9th place is Diddy Kong Racing, but it looks like someone forgot to feed the dinosaur. Things are hotting up in the fast and furious world of Forsaken as it drifts into 8th place. Dodging the traffic, Mario Kart 64 is still making an impact in 7th position. At number 6, our cute hero has some very slippery enemies to contend with in Yoshi's Story. Still keeping the spectators happy is International Superstar Soccer 64, scoring at 5. In fourth place, that plump plumber looks like he's got his hands full as he fights the foliage in Super Mario 64. Pushing the driver to the limit, GT64 comes screeching in for a pit stop at number three. At two, FIFA Road to World Cup 98 is still on target as one of the best football games to the better future that they... But staying cool at number one is Bond in GoldenEye 007. Following on from where the 1983 movie left off, War Games on the PlayStation continues the battle between man and machine. In the film, a teenager almost causes a world war when he breaks into NORAD's battle computer and begins to play a dangerous game. Now the computer has a mind of its own and is waging war against humans. With the choice of playing as either the computer or man, in both the one and two player modes you must complete a series of missions and destroy your opponent before he destroys you. But don't be fooled into thinking this is another strategy title aspiring to be the next Command and Conquer. It isn't. War Games is essentially an arcade blaster, with the addition of a few tactical options and that's where its appeal lies. Whilst being instantly playable, it has the added depth of actually making you think. Although at times the graphics appear rather clumsy, the gameplay moves fluidly enough to enable you to overlook the rough edges, making war games well worth battling to play. Situation critical. The battles continue in Mech Commander, a real-time strategy game for your PC, in which you must control an army of robots and regain your homeland from the evil Smoke Jaguar clan. Tell them we're clear. We are go for invasion. During the invasion, you command the various mech warriors, which have to be built, repaired, and of course sent into battle. Each one has unique weapons and tactical capabilities, so careful planning is a must. Along the way, you're given mission briefings, which are more helpful than most in games of this type. Despite the loss of X-Ray Company, our battle plan is intact. We will take this planet back. As with most strategy titles, not enough time has been spent on the animations and the actual battles are often too small to evoke any real drama or atmosphere. That said, a lot of time has been spent on the strategic elements in Mech Commander and there's enough of a tactical challenge to blow away most of the opposition. When it comes to making big-budget action-adventure movies, Hollywood often takes its influences from the past. The latest of these combines Jurassic Park with some classic Japanese B-movies. What's that? This monster of the deep has now been resurrected by the makers of Independence Day. Oh, Godzilla! And in true Hollywood style, it's hoping to crush its predecessors underfoot. Hurry up! Run! Godzilla was Japan's answer to King Kong, but the creators of his 90s counterpart were not impressed by the special effects. Hey, everybody out! It's Godzilla! Godzilla's coming! Oh. You have to remember how Godzilla was created. I mean, the, the original Godzilla was made in Japan shortly after World War II. 
And they were limited to putting a, a guy in a big rubber suit lumbering down a street because that's as far as they could go technologically at the time. This, it felt to me it was more respectful in some aspect to not try to alter the Godzilla that was done for generation and just step on to doing a new creature, a new direction. You still have the spirit of the old Godzilla within that new guy. Only now can we really present Godzilla in the way that I think the original authors intended him to be, which is lethal and fast and agile and with a few new tricks up his sleeve. What else did you find out? We know that he eats tons of fish. And he's also computer generated. Designed using high-end graphics software, Godzilla's look was being kept very secret until the film was finally released. But it wasn't the monster's appearance that gave filmmakers the biggest problems, but his influence on the city around him. Because the creature has to move through New York, the eye is much more sensitive to faking it. So we had to do a lot more in real. We had to make real cars flip over on the street. We had to make real debris fall, real fish fall out of the sky. And then later we will put Godzilla into those shots because otherwise the eye would be able to detect that it's not really New York. However, one of the most impressive scenes in the film when Godzilla arrives in a local harbor didn't involve any computer trickery. It was achieved by propelling a physical model of his head towards the pier and filming it at a high frame rate to give a real sense of the monster's size. If Godzilla the movie is as huge as its namesake, then all other special effects movies should be running for cover. But with the world constantly under threat, the man in the suit may have the last laugh. While Godzilla takes on the planet, Cybernet will continue to take on the world of computer entertainment. Don't forget you can always have a bash at entering our competition to win a console. Until next time, here's the mean monster before he got computerized.